Hello everyone, we are about to embark on the fourth fish tank in the gallery, and that's the low boy right behind us. You've already done some work, so Joanna, well, I didn't really tell her that, we. hey, we haven't filmed anything yet, and so she already Oops. pulled out a ridiculous amount of plants out of this 50 gallon low boy, and we are left with just a little bit of the hardscaping and the fish, and we've gotta get all that stuff out of the tank, because we're gonna completely break it down, completely clean it, and completely reset it up again. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, so I am in the process of draining this aquarium, and while we're doing that, we got all the fish that were in the tank moved out into this bin with some air stones. The filter media is in there. The plants are set aside, and so now it's just a matter of getting this thing emptied, get the substrate out, and get this tank cleaned up. All right, so we've got the tank cleared out. We've got the lights on. These are the AI Aqua Illumination. Uh, these are the planted lights. I will talk more about them towards the end of the video. Uh, big thing, and that is we finally got the carpet out of here. So there's gonna be a little bit of echo until we replace that and we're gonna get some area rugs. Uh, there was a massive, like full room carpet in here. Uh, area rug is the word I was looking for. And not a good thing to have in a fish room. So I'm glad we got rid of that. Uh, finally got this, this tank centered, which is going to be huge. Now what we have to do is we have to start getting the hardscape in. Okay, everybody. So. As is normally the case, I did how much of the scaping, what percentage so far? How much did you do? How much did I do? About I don't know. 99%? I, I don't know about 99%, but I, I threw the rocks in there. It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be a little ominous and scary based on the fish we've got going in, which we will reveal very, very shortly. But I, I like it because it's, it's the center. And I think... It looks pretty good so far from all angles, right? So no matter where we're at in the fish room, in the gallery, sorry, it's interesting on all ends. So of course now the plan is I need to put some water in there and let Joanna do her thing and she's the expert at planting this thing. We'll see what she comes up with and what she wants to do and uh, we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here it is, and again, sorry for the echo without that carpet in here. There's going to be a little bit more echo until we've fixed that situation, but obviously we did a lot of planting. Joanna did pretty much all the front of the planting, and I actually did some planting this time. I did some of the back, and so we've got a bunch of stuff in here, but for right now, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. We got to still add the fish, and this is going to be the exciting part. Uh, I'm really excited about the fish, but let's go ahead and get those bad boys in. All right, so the first fish that we're going to be adding, and Joanna's going to go ahead and add them, they are peacock gudgeons. I absolutely love these fish, and I've talked about them forever and ever. We've bred thousands of these fish. These are full size, so these peacock gudgeons are full size, full of color, they are going to look amazing in this aquarium. As you can see here, love them, but don't wait. We're not done yet. All right, next ones that are going in, staying with our theme, we have the Empire Gudgeons. These are a little bit larger. You can see here, and actually we've got two males and I believe two female Empire Gudgeons. These are great fish. Like I said, when the males are comfortable and they will be absolutely full of color, Joanna just put in the two, what I believe to be our females. Let's go ahead and get the big boys in here. She's actually doing this by hand. These are pretty gentle fish. Uh, they don't tend to freak out much rather than just dump them in the aquarium. And there we have it. So there's four empire gudgeons. Now, again, the theme here, we've got a couple more different types of fish to add. All right, next one up, and these were in here before, one of my all-time favorite gobies. These are the purple spot gobies. Now, I will say from the start, they're a little bit funky looking. One of them's got kind of a bent spine, but I love them anyway, and that's the one right there. And then one of them, something happened to the tail. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but you can see just how pretty these guys are. He's the one who's got a little bit of a bent spine, but not getting rid of them because I love these fish. They're one of my all-time favorites. This is the really pretty one, but as with all of these, they're, they're a little bit funky. Again, the, here the dorsal fin 
is a little bit off. It was born that way, or at least it came to us that way. I don't know if it was born that way, but I remember that's kind of the way it looked. And this last one, I guess this is kind of like the fish of misfits, but this last one, I have no idea what happened to it, but he's got a missing tail. This is the prettiest one of them all, except for the fact that he's got part of his tail that is definitely no longer there. So, like, why are you putting all these fish in this brand new tank? Because it's the gudgeon, the Gobi gudgeon tank. Gudgeons and Gobi tank. Gudgeons and Gobi tank. And we got the peacock gudgeons, the empire gudgeon, and then these cool purple spots. Now, if you just look at it like that, he's pretty awesome. All right. And now we've got the grand finale. This is a very rare fish, actually. This is a rainbow gudgeon. Uh, he's the biggest of them all. And when he's not stressed out, believe it or not, uh, this is the fish that has the most potential for awesome color. You can see him there. And so these are the, the main inhabitants. You can see, and this is really cool, you can see the difference in size between a peacock gudgeon and the purple spot goby right there. All right, and we're gonna have a couple bristlenose plecos for algae control just because, well, we need them. And so here's just a standard male. This is a male, you can tell he's got the bristles. And so he's gonna probably go and hide for a little while. Here we've got a super red, this is a female. She's been in here a very, very long time, as all these fish have. It's just they've been hard to see with the scape the way it was. And the final inhabitants, which were in here before, we have six gold or orange laser quarry cats, little crazy guys. When we, they were in the old setup, again, it was really hard to see them, and I didn't know how many were in here for a while. I thought they were all gone. And then as they got larger, they would come out a little bit more, especially around feeding time, and it was funny because I realized, oh, we've got one, there's still one in here. Oh, look, there's two. Oh, three. And now apparently we have six. I thought there were five. All right, everybody, so this is the aquarium. I know we're basically blocking it, but don't worry. We're gonna be showing you plenty of B-roll as we talk about this aquarium. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the one that I think made the biggest difference on the in the fish room gallery side of things. This is now tank number four. I will link the other three builds, the two 125s behind us and the 75 gallon that's currently off screen. We have just one more tank to go. And a whole lot of work to do to the gallery itself in terms of, well, now you've got an echo, you can hear it in here, I'm sure we can hear it. That's because the big floor carpet thing that was in here. Yeah, it's gone. Really bad idea, as I mentioned before, but we finally got that out. We finally got this thing centered. We gotta get the walls done. We've gotta get some seating in here in addition to that last tank. But let's talk about this. So. This is a 50 gallon low boy. By the way, if you wanna see a review on that tank, I will put it in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below, you can check out this aquarium. And this is now the second iteration. And to be honest, it was kind of looking a little rough, would you say? A lot rough. It was looking a lot rough because for the last six or eight months, we knew that this was going to be happening. And so it was fine. The water parameters were great and everything, but there were definitely some things. If we weren't going to do this, we would have had to have changed it anyway. All right, so let's talk about the equipment first. We had, this is something that needed to be updated anyway. Previously on this tank, we had a Seachem Title 35 and an AquaClear 20 on this 50 gallon. It just wasn't enough and it was, the flow wasn't good enough. So even if we had done nothing to this tank, we would have had to have changed the filter out, but I'm very happy uh, with the filter, the canister filter we have on here. It is the Oaza Thermo Biomaster 350 and it is an awesome filter. I did a review on the 850 Thermo. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But this filter is basically just like it, just a few less compartments, little less gallons per hour, but all the same quality that you would expect from Oaza. Uh, thank you so much to them for sending us this filter because like I said before in the review, this is the canister filter that kind of changed me over because they have a pre-filter area where you can just maintain that without having to break down the entire canister filter. So uh, we have that, lights. The lights are these. This is the Aqua Illumination uh, Freshwater Prime. We have two of them on this aquarium. Remember when we saw these the first time? Do you remember where they were? She probably doesn't. No. She, she doesn't pay attention. She just worries about the scapes. Yeah. I worry about the equipment. These were at Aqua Shella. Okay. Uh, they were in Florida. And when we put these, I put these on the tank and I was like, oh my gosh. And I would talk to the guy, uh, the representative, Cade, who works for Aqua Illumination. I'm like, what are these things? Uh, can you send us some? Because I would really love to, to test these things and evaluate them. He's like, yeah, sure. So he sent us the, the Aqua Illumination. That's the four foot and the six foot 
uh, LEDs that we have on these tanks. I'm going to get a review out on those pretty soon, an initial uh, unboxing. And then also these for the low boy. These are outstanding lights. Uh, they remind me a lot of Kessel. They are very high quality, only not Kessel prices, which is really great. I did a Kessel review and a lot of people said, wow, at that time, those lights are really expensive. These not quite as much, but you get high quality, full programmability. And you don't have some of the gimmicks that some of the other lights have, like, oh, let's do the lightning feature or something like that. That's not really what they're going for. These are high end, made for planted aquariums. And so we have two on this 50 gallon low boy. Right now, they are at 50%. So to give you an idea of just how bright they can be, and this tank, by the way, I mean, we're sitting in front of it right now. It looks very, very bright and almost very cold. That's because we Bubbles. basically just filled up the tank. The water will chill out a little bit, as I like to say, right? Uh, so, but this is an outstanding light. We will talk about this and do a review on this light as well. Now, so we got the lights, we've got the filter, and now the lights go off. So let, let me show you something here. I had this thing, so I haven't programmed the schedule yet. And everything comes with an app. So hold on a second here. Let me show you. Uh, oh my gosh, let me fix this situation here. And so we have, we have this app here. And it's got all of our lights on there right now. And so I'll go to the low boy and I'll just click. So I've got some options here. I'll just click lights on 50% for one hour and boom, That's there cool. they come on. And there's, I, this is not gonna focus on here, I'm sorry. But when I do the review, I'll make it better. But uh, you can do enable schedule and you can schedule your lights and turn them on any way you want. Thanks lights for doing that right in the middle of the video. But it's that easy and it's a really easy app to use. And now all the lights on this side are on that app. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Aquascape itself because uh, we went a little different than we've done in the previous aquariums in the gallery. First thing, substrate, what did we do? Well, we got black sand. Black sand. And the black sand, a lot of people ask us, well, what kind of black sand do we use? You went out this afternoon, you got a bunch of black sand, and what did you buy? I did. I went to the old Petco, and I think everybody's now selling the same, same stuff. I used to be totally addicted to PetSmart topped in black sand, but that's no longer... They just don't make it anymore, and it's, it seems to be all the same stuff. It almost has like a little bit of a shimmer to it, but that's what I got. And so loaded up really whatever they had. Yeah, and so again, we don't use anything special when it comes to the black sand. Whatever Petco, PetSmart has, that's what's in here. It looks fine. It's in a lot of our other tanks. Never had a problem. It's an inert substrate, which means it's not going to alter your pH at all. Uh, we did not, even though we've got a lot of plants in here, we'll talk about that in a few moments, we did not do any kind of planted substrate. All right, so next thing, rocks. What did we choose for the rocks? Seiryu stone. Now, what was funny about this is mm -hmm. I started pulling out the Seiryu stone out of one of the bins that we have, and I started placing it in the tank, and what did you say to me? I'm like, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean, what am I doing? I thought we were going for something different. I had Dragonstone stuck in my head. I thought that's what we were doing. But and apparently, Mr. Aquascaper had his own vision in mind. I did. I had my own vision in mind because what is this tank called? It's called Gudgeons and Gobies. Gudgeons and Gobies. Kind of like dragons, Dungeons and Dragons. This is yeah. Gudgeons and Gobies. Gudgeons and Gobies. And so what I imagined here was something with a dark substrate. By the way, it's gonna show up, when these fish get settled in, all of them are gonna show outstanding color. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, a nice gray and black and all the kind of mixing in together. And so that's what I, what I was thinking. You were sure. thinking Dragonstone. Uh, Dragonstone is that more tan color, but very similar sort of texture. And so that's what we did, and I got to escape a, a decent amount of it, right? Would um, you say? He always says that, but he, he, you place like 99% of the rocks. I think I put one in. Yeah, and, and to give me an idea of how much thought I put into it, it was probably, how, how fast do you think I oh did Oh my gosh. That? Well, that's why I really love him. He makes really fast decisions. I mean, I could be down here for hours and be like, well, I'm not done. And... I wish I would have timed you. It was probably right around the neighborhood of 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah, I just see something, I like it, I go yeah. with it. And, and maybe, I, I, listen, I've got a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room. But You're for me, this is, this is a good start. And the plants, what would we primarily do with the plants? The plants that we had from this tank, which you would not believe, wish we would have gotten more footage of that, but the Crips and Anubias were everywhere in yeah. here and the roots were each about like this long. And there was a couple of Bacopas, really excited about that. And I think maybe a Rotella. And a random Java fern. And one random Java fern, which I did, 
I told him, I said, I don't want you in here. And I put him in there just to hopefully that he'll survive. And what you have to understand about the previous iteration of this tank, we had some massive Anubias growing well above the water line. And all of that right now is in the 75 gallon on the fish room side. And so what we stuck with here were primarily probably Anubias Nana. I, uh, I don't know what kind of Anubias we have. Yes, because we don't have the coffee folia. I think we might have a, a might have a Fujiri or two, but a lot of uh, just Barterai Nanos. Yep, and then we've got the crip, uh, the red crips, and we've got some green crips. Yes. I love crips, and they're hopefully, if everything goes to plan, they will kind of grow up around the rocks, which will be pretty nice, and it'll kind of finish the look a little bit. No wood in this aquarium, so unlike the Wouldn't previous two, yeah, I didn't really want to add wood to this aquarium, uh, unlike the previous two 125s, where, and I like to do the wood part, I, that's really fun for me, but mm -hmm. I just, I didn't think it was fitting in well with what we have going on. It in could here. look like a tree on a mountain. I'm just it saying. could, it could, and maybe we'll change it at some point, but right now, no. Uh, <laughs> so with that being said, we did not use a planted substrate. So what did we do? We put a bunch of root tabs. We did. We put a bunch of root yeah. tabs in the aquarium. Uh, we just used the aquarium co-op, yeah, easy root tabs. I, they're mm -hmm. very, very easy to use. So uh, those went in this aquarium. Uh, I think I put maybe 10 or 12 just kind of all around the rock works. We've got a lot of crypts that are all around the perimeter of the rocks. So that's what we did there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the fish. Obviously, they're the stars of everything. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about the non-gudgeons and gobies first, and that is the six orange or gold laser quarry cats that we have in this tank. They were in here before. I told this story as we were, as we were doing the video. I thought at one point we had one. It left in this tank. I put I put some in here a long, long time ago, but there was again tons and tons of plants, lots and lots of rocks, uh, some yeah. driftwood. So you really didn't see a lot of the fish until it was time to eat. And I thought they were all gone. I thought they didn't make it. And then one day I saw one or two come out, and then I saw like four. And then I think at one point I said, "Oh, we've got five in here," and it turned out we had six. Six. Uh, so every one that I put in here is still here. So how cool is that? I love these fish. They're probably my favorite quarry cat. So I'm glad they're in here. Uh, we did put two bristlenose pleckles. We have a male that is just a standard brown male. And then we have a, a super red female bristlenose. They'll hopefully keep an eye on the algae situation. And then of course the stars of the show, we start tiny and that was a peacock gudgeons. And we recommend them all the time. Uh, if you've got a, a, a aquarium that's 10 gallons or greater, peacock gudgeons, the ones we have here are full grown. That's it, they are adults. Males get a nuchal hump on their head. Females tend to have a little bit more of a rounded belly and they are awesome fish. I think we found seven or eight on the fish room side that we still had. Uh, and so they're in here and I wanted to represent because I don't think the gudgeons and gobies get nearly enough love. And what I wanted to do is represent them in this aquarium. And so we started small with the peacock gudgeons and they're pretty easy to find, right? You can find those pretty much anywhere. Uh, retail prices anywhere from maybe, I don't know, $10, eight to $15, depending on the, on the fish store. And then the next largest. Empire Gudgeons. The Empire Gudgeons. Now these are, are rarer, right? So they're more rare fish. Uh, we have two males, two females, and oh my gosh, when they fire up, you know, when we put them in here, they're a little bit stressed out, but I really wish I would have taken video of them while they were in the old tank because they were all fired up. The entire front half of their body was orange. Their dorsal fins were orange with that white outlining. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that, but maybe it'll have to be an update later on. So we've got four of those. They're expensive. They're a little bit harder to find. And usually when you see them at a pet store, anywhere from 20 to $40 a piece. Next one up. That is the purple spot. Yeah. I had this I fish. Them forever. I had this fish, oh boy, 25, 30 years ago and fell in love with the purple spot goby. And they're right here behind us. They're gnarly. <laughs> I, um, so it's going to kind <laughs> of be special. like the, the tank of misfits when it comes to the purple spot gobies, but I absolutely will not get rid of any of them uh, because. They're one of my all-time favorite fish, the purple spot goby. These guys are pretty much maxed out right around five inches or so. One of them's got a little bit of an arch to his back. I, I, again, it's a genetic thing. The other one was perfect, and I mean it looked perfect, and something happened to its back fin. I don't think anybody attacked it because they pretty much all get along in here. I almost wonder if the fin got caught in the Seachem Tidal 35 intake oh, wow. because it's a straight it's an absolute it's straight off and it wasn't like that before that's the only thing i could think that could have happened i think it's gonna grow back and it's all different. i hope it does because the rest of the body of that fish looks outstanding and he's showing great color back here so 
Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. And then we've got one that is mostly normal, except the dorsal fin. It came in that way. The dorsal fin's a little whacked out. So I, I promise you, normally these, these purple spot gobies don't come in looking like the land of misfits, but ours do, and I don't care, because I wanted to showcase them even in their form that they are now, because they're amazing fish, and one of my all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. the, the, the prize of the tank, the pinnacle fish, if you will, the centerpiece, what do we got? Rainbow. He's, he's so a, it's rainbow a rainbow goby. goby. So I found I, like I found these rainbow gobies on a list, an import list, and they were extraordinarily expensive. I think just the fish alone, I, I don't even remember what it was, but when you do the calculations, I think the fish cost me like $60, $70, because it, it came in fairly large just to bring it in. Retail, it, it wouldn't surprise me to see them going for at least $100 a piece. It's the biggest fish we have in this tank, and it is, give it time, it's going to get larger. I mean, these fish can max out right around 10 inches, maybe a little bit larger. and. It is going to show hopefully amazing color as it gets used to its surroundings and gets used to this tank. It went from a quarantine tank, it was in here for a little while, and then of course now we've switched everything around on him. So uh, hopefully he will so show some awesome color. Great personality, that was one thing that you were commenting he's fun. on. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. definitely like he's a, a, a great pet. Guy. He'll come up to you, he's like, oh, it's time to eat, how's it going? So mm -hmm. does not like being caught at all, absolutely no, freaks out about like the that. whole situation. But anyway, so anything else you want to add about the aquarium? Any final thoughts? Well, besides it being themed, it is our uh, theme tank of gudgeons and gobies. I think you've pretty much renamed it like Misfit Island. Well, at least for the, the purple spots, I, I would guess that's the case. But the rest of the fish look Either absolutely one. awesome. So uh, we're done I, with this tank. A lot of the tanks, especially the 125s, we've got so many fish to add. So hopefully you'll stick around and stay tuned and subscribe for that. But this tank, for the most part, is done. I don't want to add anything else. We've got everything that I want in here. Uh, beyond what we have, I, I just don't... I don't think it would fit, but the two 125s behind us, we've got some fish in the fish room that need to come over to the gallery. Uh, next up, like I said, we're going to add in the walls, uh, or at least add in some more stuff from the walls, more interest there. Fix up these 125s, add some more fish there. We have the 75 on the other side, and then we'll be bringing the live stream down here. And so in some ways, what you're seeing behind us is very similar to what you're yeah. going to see in the live stream, except we're going to push everything back. You're going to see a lot more of the gallery. So. That is where we're at right now. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.